I don't understand how time goes by, but I can't shake this. I don't understand why life keeps moving forward and I can't get past this. You know, people try to talk to me and try to help me. And they always say that they understand, but they don't, they can't. How can they understand if they haven't lived it? How can they understand if they haven't choked on their own fear? How can they understand if they haven't had someone degrade them? You're laying there and you try to fight back, but you can't. And then you try to scream, but nothing comes out. And then when you finally do scream, nobody comes and helps you. Nobody saves you. And the shock of what's happening becomes so fucking overwhelming that you tell yourself it's not really happening. It's a nightmare. It has to be a nightmare and you're going to wake up. And you're just sitting there experiencing this thing that is supposed to bring you pleasure. But instead, it's just bringing you so much pain. And you wait, and you're just fucking waiting for it to finally be over. And the seconds feel like hours, and it's, you hear nothing, but at the same time, sounds are deafening. And then when it's finally over, time just kind of stops. And you sit there quietly, just waiting to wake up, you know? And you wait, and you wait, and you wait, and you fucking wait to wake up, but you never wake up. And that's all I want, I just wanna wake up. I just fucking, I just need to wake up. Please, just somebody let me wake up. But you never wake up. And then you realize that it was never a dream. It's just a nightmare that you never wake up from. So every morning, the sun comes through my window, the ass crack of dawn and wakes me up. Even though I put up curtains, they do nothing. No matter which way I sleep or which way I turn, the light always finds me. That horrible, horrible light finds me no matter what I do or no matter where I go. It truly is the worst part of my day, you know? when the grogginess of sleep is slowly washed away by reality. And he is the first thing that I think about when I wake up in the morning, and he's the last thing that I think about when I finally fall asleep. So that's how I start my day. Every single day with the lovely memories of being raped by my tender date. What is your primary feeling in regard to what he did to you? Primary feeling. Rage. Sadness. Fear. Disgust. 
Shane. Take your pick. Okay, I want you to raise your hand if you feel your primary feeling is sadness. Okay? I want you to raise your hand if you feel your primary feeling is anger. Interesting. So what you're feeling, it's not as simple as one primary emotion. How can it be? How can something so catastrophic lead to one emotion? So when we, America, dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima, there were, were many things that followed. Death and destruction and fear and despair and desperation and sadness and anger. Which one of those feelings was the primary feeling? Ask a child who just watched her mother get incinerated what her primary reaction was. It's a really good comparison because that is what has happened to each and every one of you. You've all had an atomic bomb land on you and your lives and your happiness. Tell me more about that date. We met on Tinder. We hung out at a bar. We both had a bit to drink. He's really kind and sweet and shy. He said that he would love to talk to me all night. Um, and then I invited him back to my apartment because I don't know, I just felt like it was safer there, you know? I, I don't know. I was having a good time. I don't know, I... He just was really laid back. Really innocent. I don't know, I guess I was... The alcohol was getting to me and I was really tired and I was ready to call it a night. He walked to the door like everything was fine. And the next thing I knew, he had me on the ground. He shoved something in my mouth. I just kept thinking, I don't know, why is he so mad at me? What did I do? I was on my stomach. I couldn't move couldn't get him off of me. And I just was, I was trying to wrap my head around everything, you know, and I just, I, I couldn't think. And I didn't realize that he was fucking me until I realized that it hurt. And then I realized that he wasn't wearing a condom. And for some reason I cared about that because on top of all of this, I sure as hell didn't like a disease. And then he came inside of me because why not make this the absolute worst moment of my entire fucking life? And the police? He gave me a fake name. He deleted his account. He was a ghost. And then right before he left, he whispered in my ear, I'll see you again soon. So if being physically and emotionally traumatized wasn't enough, now I wait in absolute terror for him to return. And that was my atomic bomb. How are you today? You know, you know it's amazing that the sheer number of ways that a, that a woman can seduce a man. Did someone seduce you? Many women do, have. And some unintentionally, but some, some intentionally, but some unintentionally. Unintentionally? The clothes they wear, the way they're Pants fit around their rear end. The way they, their, the way their breasts, their bras push their breasts up. The way they lean over, exposing their cleavage. The way they smell. It's the makeup they wear. The way they walk. The way they can hold your stare for just a few seconds longer than they should. And this arouses you. Yeah. 
I'm overtaken with the urge to kiss them, to hold them, to have them. It's the most difficult thing I've ever faced in my life. The urge to have a woman but not be able to have her. Sometimes the urge to have a woman is stronger than the ability to stop myself. When it's happening to you, you just keep telling yourself, it'll be over soon, just hang on. I was walking into my apartment when he came out of the staircase, shoved me in, held a knife to my throat. I just kept telling myself, hold on, just hold on, he'll finish and it'll all be over. The problem is that attack, that fucking assault didn't just end that day because I relive it every time I walk into my house, every time I get off the elevator, every time I see a man walk near me. Think about how fucked up that is. Even talking about it now is still hard, you know? I feel so powerless and angry. I spoke up in court. I looked him in the eyes and I told him how he destroyed my life. The piece of shit winked at me. Well, there are no words to describe the horror of that night and how it feels to be dehumanized. Talking about it is really necessary. You know, he took photos of me when he was raping me. Part of how they caught him. Dumbfuck left them on his phone. At the trial, I saw the photos for the first time and what I saw was images after images of my breast with these hands on them. The hands of a stranger. At one point, I saw what I first thought was a dead woman's face. I thought it was another one of his victims. But then I realized it was me. It was me. I was lifeless and I didn't even recognize myself. I don't see you. I see him. God, I would never push you away, ever. I, I never want to make you relive those moments. I, I just want to help you, help us. I'm sorry, I am so sorry. Babe, talk to me. I just, honestly, I feel like, why would you want me? I'm damaged, I'm dirty. That's ridiculous. No, it's not. You shouldn't have to be stuck with someone who's been you deserve better. I deserve you. No, I'm no good. Look, I'm fucking trash. Stop it. Look how far we've come since that happened. You're an amazing person. You're a victim. When I look at myself, I don't see that. I don't deserve you. I don't deserve anyone. Listen to me. I am grateful for you every day of my life. What happened to you doesn't define who you are. I just, God, I just hate myself. And honestly, I don't see how you can love me. I don't see how anyone can love me anymore. I stayed up all night, mad at myself, disgusted with myself. I couldn't believe I did that to him. I can't even explain the look he had in his eyes. How hurt he was. How confused. Well, you know what they say, hurt people hurt people. First I was shocked, then I was offended, then I was angry. And then I tried to imagine what she was going through, the, the torture, the, the nightmare that you never wake up from. And that night as she slept in my arms, I, I cried. I, I cried for what she went through and 
is still still going through. Yes, I think I think there might be I think there might be You know what? I'm sorry, it's a false alarm. Sorry. It was Wednesday afternoon. I was working from home. I often do. A doorbell rang, said it was UPS. I didn't think to look for a UPS truck or anything. So he was carrying a large box. I didn't want to deal with lifting a box, so I asked him if he could bring it inside for me. Stupid, right? I let him in. I asked him to come in. He put the box down, wasn't wearing a uniform. I saw the gun. I understood what was happening, but at the same time, I just couldn't process it. Maybe I just wouldn't process it. Take your fucking clothes off now. Now! Take your fucking clothes off! He forced me to take my clothes off and, well, you know the rest. But as he was raping me, he held that gun to my head and he forced me to look him in the eyes the entire time. And that's what stuck with me the most. I, I can't really look people in the eye anymore, not for long. And you know, I'll tell you, most people think I'm happy all the time, normal. I've built up so many walls, I can't even find myself anymore. I prefer to live in silence, but the silence is truly deafening, it's terrifying. And the worst part, I'm scared. I am always scared, always. What kind of life is that? Rape is one of the most terrible crimes on earth. And yet it happens every few minutes. The problem with groups that deal with rape is that they try to educate women about how to defend themselves. And what really needs to happen is to teach men not to rape. Go to the source and start there. This was not your fault. Each and every one of you needs to know that this was not your fault. People started saying rape isn't about sex. It's about control and power. It's, just, it's time to stop saying that shit. Rape is about sex. You know, rapists want power and sex because in sex there is power. And if they just they beat you up, it's one thing, but it is about sex. It's always about sex. And so what people that have never been sexually assaulted try to put out their theory is that rape isn't really about sex. They, they just, they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Excuse me, I, I, can I help? I, I just called AAA. They're like an hour away. My, my car won't start. The heat's not working. Uh, well, do you want to stay in my car while you wait? It's freezing. It's freezing out here. Thanks, but... Well, but, I mean, if my boyfriend sees us, we're just friends. Oh. Oh, you're... I didn't know... Sure. I'd love to. Come on in. The heat awaits. Sex has become so fucking awkward, and awkward isn't even the right word. I know what she means. It's like, you want to enjoy it, you want to relax, but you can't. Someone inside of you is just 
way too harsh of a reminder. It's easier if it's like slow, you know, like gentle. Yeah, but when a guy does it, it's hard and fast. Even if you want it, it just takes you right back. It takes you right back. And if he's saying shit like just stuff a guy would say when fucking you. Yeah, like even if it's your boyfriend, everything he says gets misconstrued or you take it badly and then you can't enjoy yourself and you just want him off of you. And I, and I love my boyfriend, but sex becomes claustrophobic. I, I feel trapped. Yes, you feel trapped and scared and vulnerable and you feel like you have to fight for your life to get away. I started dating Michelle because I thought she was hot, but I stayed with her because I fell in love with who she was. And thank God for that because this whole thing has been incredibly difficult for both of us. I'm not trying to downplay what happened to her, but I'm scared, literally scared to touch her, to kiss her, to be passionate with her. You see, me acting on my desire for her is a constant reminder of what happened, and I feel guilty. Whether it's sex or just about anything, I feel so guilty, and that's not making our lives any better. My friends are like, dude, find someone else. You can't be with someone that you feel guilty about having sex with, but I know she's the one, so we have to make it work. Are you angry? Am I angry? I want to find him, torture him, kill him, fucking burn him, and then piss on his ashes. And then, only then, I might feel better. Of course I'm angry. I try to hide it, but under the sadness, under the fear, there's a lot of anger. I'm not going to sugarcoat it or be politically correct. I have so much anger running through me that I never thought was possible. And if I could, I would rape him. I would rape him with something hard and sharp over and fucking over until he truly understood what he did to me. Yeah, I'm extremely fucking angry. You seem happy today. Thank heaven for little girls, you know. Little girls get bigger every day. Thank heaven for little girls. Little girls grow up in the most delightful way. Did you do something since the last time I saw you? I was naughty. You know, but women, women are really are God's greatest creations. But you know, there's so many, so many beautiful women in the world and you can't help but wonder what it would be like to be with this one and that one. But none of them seem to, well, to like me or or want me. Well, women have the right to say no. Mm hmm But, but if they knew me, if they really knew me, they would say yes. I was so excited to start college. Uh, my family too, we, uh, we went up to the campus like a month before. My dad got all these stupid proud parent shirts and bumper stickers on the college bookstore. They were so proud of me and they just kept telling me, you know, what an amazing opportunity this was. Were you looking forward to it? Yeah, the endless, yeah. Um, new beginnings, you know. Um, but, but it was fun, it was great. I, I basically made some new friends and we started partying. And to be honest, the first few months were a total blur. Um, I met him at a Halloween party. I didn't even know he was like the star football player of the school. I just, I didn't care. He was just, it was really funny, um, cute, and sweet. He was sweet. Um, he was a few years older than me, but you know, I, I trusted him. Um, and so anyway, then like you know, a few weeks, like two weeks later, um, at another party, uh, we were, we were both kind of drunk. I know, this is really difficult. Let's take a deep breath. And then continue when you're ready. So uh, he, he took me to some room and um, I, I remember seeing all these clothes all over the floor and I just kept thinking, you know, this room is really dirty. And, and smells bad, you know, like that shit you put on sore muscles. Um, I just, 
I just, I just thought we would, like, you know, kiss a little. Huh. Are you afraid to me? Because I, I screamed. I, I fought back and kept telling him, no, please, no, not yet. He held me down and finished. And he went back to the party while I cried in the corner of the room. And then it got worse because I reported it. And so, you know, meeting after meeting after meeting and all they kept talking about was how drunk I was. How drunk I was and how we were already dating and basically how he didn't actually read me. And I said it was screaming and, and telling him no, so how is that not rape? You know, and then they, they start asking, well, if you were screaming, then why didn't anyone hear you? You know, why would the star football player need to rape someone? And how do you rape your own girlfriend? And I was just like, really? Like, rape is the only crime in which the victim becomes the accused. And that was it. They, they don't like bad press, you know, they don't want their amazing football team to look bad, so they don't want anyone or anything getting in the way of their contributions. And so, you know, I become a liar. A slut. And soon everyone thought I made it up, and so I had to leave school in shame. And he went on to get drafted. You know, I still, I still have that smell in my head. I just, I can't get it out. It, it haunts me every day. Like I said, I so, was so excited to start college. I've asked you all how angry you are about what's happened to you. And I ask because when, when I was raped, I was terrified. And my, my biggest regret was not being able to fight back. The, the fear, it, it just paralyzes you. And ever since then, I, I've, I've had this like, enormous amount of pent up rage. You can't keep it inside of you. It poisons you. It literally eats away at who you are. You see, when someone sexually assaults you, they're not just fucking your body. They're fucking your mind. They're fucking your future. They're fucking any chance you have at a normal relationship. You can't keep it in. No, you can't. I treat a rapist. You what? How can you do that? I mean, you run a woman's group for rape survivors. You yourself were raped. I'm a therapist and, and I treat a rapist. Can't you call the police? I mean, can't you have them put away? Seriously, what the fuck? Wait, I thought what you said in therapy was confidential. Mm, no, no, it's not that simple. It depends upon the crime the, to which the patient allegedly confessed. And anything disclosed within the confines of a clinical treatment that's already occurred is absolutely covered under psychologist patient confidentiality. And confidentiality includes talking to the police or court testimony or anything else for that matter. <sighs> Sorry. 
I'm a lawyer. Anyway, exceptions to confidentiality include child abuse or domestic violence. So you can absolutely have his ass thrown in jail or at the very least investigated. No, I don't want him investigated. I don't want him put in jail or a rehab or a psychiatric facility. Eventually, they all get out. They all get out. What are you saying exactly? A way to release the pain inside you. A way to extinguish the demons that emotionally cripple us. A way to save others from going through what you have been through. What I have been through. You want to kill him? Yes. Yes. I want us, collectively, as a group, to take his life. You know, before my rape happened, I mean, before it happened, I was suffering. Fucking family problems, relationship problems, life-altering insecurities, always bordering on hating myself. And that river of shit that I called my life turned into an ocean of shit when he did what he did to me. So fuck it. You want to kill some low-life rapist? I would love to. Hey, she's not serious right now. Hey, are you serious right now? He lives only with his mother who has dementia. He doesn't have a job. He doesn't have any friends. No one will even know he's gone. And I'll do it at a time where the building is empty so no one will even be around to hear anything. Oh my god, she's serious. Do you understand the implications of what you're saying and how you're admitting it to this large group of people? All that we have suffered, this binds us together. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem, right? Well, I say, it's time to be part of the solution. It's time to become the solution. The solution is having him arrested. I'm in. I'm 100% in. You know, I was told once that time heals all wounds. And for some things, I think that it has. But not this. This wound refuses to close, it refuses to heal, it refuses to go away. So maybe it's time to take this into my own hands. I'm in. I believe good things happen to good people. And yet, I've suffered so many tragedies in my life. I believe the path to happiness in life is, is doing good things for people. Loving people. Not hating them. I believe that for the most part, people are good. And you can't lose faith in humanity. The weak can never forgive. Forgiveness is the attribute of the strong. Right? I already have too many scars, and my heart can't take another. I'm out. Fuck it. I've cried enough, and if I could have killed the scum that raped me, I would have, so... Yeah, I'm in. I can't believe what I'm hearing right now. Are you people actually considering this? I mean, what the fuck is wrong with you? You wanna take a man's life? Forget about what happens if you get caught. Do you have any idea how wrong it is to even be considering this? Like, the level of negative karma you'd be bringing upon yourselves? Look, I get it. I suffer too. I still cry myself to sleep. I still ask the universe, why? Why me? But what you're considering is not part of the solution. It's sick. It's, it's wrong. And it's not going to take away what happened to any of us. No. No way. I love Michelle. I really do. I want to spend the rest of my life with her. But we can never have what I want with her. We can never be truly happy. And that kills me. I don't want to ever have to resent her for that. So I'm in. I need to release this hatred inside of me. I don't want her to know. This is for me and me only. 
deep vengeance as the daughter of deep silence. This will set you free. This will set all of you free. Anything new? Any new women in your life? Yeah. Well, her, her name's Alexandra. She has this, like, she has this long brown hair, uh, green eyes, her skin is soft as a cloud. Where did you meet her? I watched her. Did you talk with her? No, no I know, I want to, but I, I get scared. Scared of what? Rejection. But being I, it's like it's just not right for someone to be that beautiful if I can't have her, like it's a sin. A, a sin? Yeah. Like, Oscar Wilde said the only way to get rid of temptation is to yield to it. That, you know, I, I can resist everything except temptation. Don't move. Do not fucking move. Please, please don't hurt me. Please, Angela, please help me. I am helping you. Oh, shut up, you piece of shit. I don't even know you. No, but we know you, who you are, what you do. No, I didn't do anything, please. One at a time, all the wicked men will fall. Who's going to do it? I will. I'll do it. No, no, Mark, please. For everything you've done, you deserve to die. But this is from all of us, and women everywhere. Do not, do not feel bad or guilty for one second, any of you. He was destined to rape women. You saved them. Destined to rape women? You said he did? You said you were treating a rapist? He was inside. It was just a matter of time. He never raped anyone. He was going to. I know he was. We just killed an innocent man. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What do, we do? What do, we do? What do we do? Just a 